So, yeah, so we said yesterday that the main miracle of Hanukkah was with oil. And that's also the oil that corresponds to the deepest secrets of the secrets of the Torah. So that's also the main miracle of the holiday of Yutet Kislev. When the first Rebbe of Chabad, he revealed for the first time in the history of man, these the oil of the Torah, the secrets of the secrets of the Torah to everybody, made it accessible to everyone. <clears throat> in the, the miracle of, of Hanukkah, as the Hashmonaim, they just revealed the essence of God just in the Torah. Because the Greeks were saying that the Torah does not come from God. It's got nothing to do with God. It's a spiritual thing. And they put godliness into the Torah. But the first Rebbe of Chabad, he put godliness into everything. <clears throat> now it's available to everyone. And that's the whole idea of also Yosef, to add on. And to add on to all the Jewish people. Okay. And so it says, according to this, now we can understand what Yaakov said when he came down into Egypt. Yaakov said to Paro, he said, <clears throat> Paro asked him, how old are you? And he said, I'm a hundred and, he said, a <clears throat> hundred and thirty-seven years he said, the, 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 <clears throat> the, 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 I've been alive, alive. I'm saying 130 years. No, at that time, it was 130 years. He lived there for another 17 years, right? So it was 147 when he passed away. When <clears throat> he said, the years of my shloshim or my ashana. When, when Yaakov came into Egypt, he said, I am 130 years old, right? That's it. 130 years old, but that's not what Yaakov said. Yaakov said, I am 130 years old. Me'at v'ra'im, few and bad, hayu yamei, were the days, shnei chaye, of the years of my life. V'lo yisigu et yamei, shnei chaye avosai, and they did not reach the years of my fathers, my forefathers, Abraham and Yitzchak, v'yamei magoriam, and the, the, the time they were in the world. <clears throat> says the Rebbe, this doesn't make any sense. First of all, Paro <clears throat> didn't ask Yaakov, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> <clears throat> for any assessment of how old he just said, how old are you? <clears throat> when Paro heard from Yaakov the number of his life, he knew himself that they were, <clears throat> if they were few or they were many. What does Yaakov say? 130 years, they were few and they were bad. What do you mean they were few? How could Yaakov say that the days were, my year, my days were few? Not only that, they weren't few. <clears throat> they, they were 130 years is a good, a nice long life. The words of Yaakov, 130 years old, he said they were very few. They are the opposite of the, of the, the truth. <clears throat> it says, Leotam, this is 10 more years than the, the completion of life of man. God, when he cursed Noah, after Noah, he said that people will only live 120 years old. He says people will live 120 years. That's what he said. So the question, right? In other words, Yaakov's answer is very questionable. Why? Because What's explained in a lot of places that Paro, he asked Yaakov, how many days are the years of your life? Why did he ask him this question? Zarkabo Seva, that all of a sudden Yaakov looked old and he looked like he was much, much older. And Paro was very amazed on how Yaakov looked old. He was suffering because of you know, the, Yosef wasn't there. <clears throat> Majority of people Zman don't have such long lives. Shikavar cuts Rushinatam. Most people have lived less in those days, right? In those days. According to this, <coughs> it's a, even a bigger wonder. She Yaakov, Mesigo, that Yaakov re replied back to him that the days of my life are 130 years and they're only a little bit. Exactly opposite of the fact. 
which was known to Paro. The Ein Marich in Yomim Kolkach, the people usually don't live 120 years. And here he's saying, I'm 130 years. Therefore, Paro was amazed at the old age of Yaakov, and he said, how old are you? So his, his amazement was justified, right? Yaakov was 130 years old. People didn't live that long in those days. How could Yaakov say, I lived 130 years, and it's very few? <clears throat> okay, maybe you can give an answer. Come on, it's not such a big question. Yaakov was giving the answer. He was saying that it was very few in relation to the life of my forefathers, right? Abraham lived 175 years. Yitzchak lived 180 years. And he is only 130 years. <clears throat> he said, I didn't reach the life of my forefathers, that they lived 180 years, like it says, it says 175 years, 180 years, that power was amazed at the long life. And Yaakov said, no, my life up to now is only a little bit in regard to the life of my fathers. Kishanot Chayavotav. My, 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 my father lived 180 years old, <clears throat> right? <clears throat> he says he looked old because his life was bad because of the, the different difficulties that went over. <clears throat> but of course, this also doesn't make any sense because what does it mean? My life is very, he's not dead yet. My father died at 180 years old. Yaakov said, I'm only 130 years old. That's very few years. According to my father, good. His father lived that long. Maybe Yaakov was going to live to be 250 years. How does he know? <clears throat> Rashi says that Lo Sigo Batova says, My life, my good years of my life aren't like the good years of my father. Masha Shakaim Alam, Shakaf Lama, the, 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 the 130 years of Yaakov themselves, not only in regarding his forefathers, but they were few, not talking about the, his forefathers, how old his forefathers were. So it seems that Yaakov was saying, 130 years that I lived was very, very few, very little. Now come on, give a little bit of thanks to God. Say, thank God I'm 130 years old. No, he said, I got 130, I'm 130 years old, and it's Kalum. Right, it's like a person wins the, the lottery, he gets 20 million dollars, and he says, Eh, it's a cool miles of you hundred you know, 20 million dollars. Right, a poor guy doesn't have anything. 20 million, eh, 20 million. I know my, my friend Schmerl, he he got 30 million. Why do I only get 20? That's ridiculous. A person's not gonna say that. Yaakov, the Torah tells us that Yaakov said, Eh, I only got 130 years old. Then what's that? says we can explain that the day. What is he saying? That the days of my life were very few, even though that they were 110. <clears throat> this is talking about very few in quality. In other words, even though that in quantity, I have a lot of years, I've lived longer than most people do up to now, and I still have life in front of me. <clears throat> but they are very, my life is very few in quality. The days were days that were missing. The opposite of what it says that, like Abraham, Baba Yomim, that his days were complete. That it means that his days were full with meaning, full of blessing. Even more, <clears throat> the, not only are they very few, they were terrible. Inyans and Nishlam, how was it only in the last 17 years of Yaakov's life were they good? That's going to be next week's Torah portion. Ke'ilu kol yomav tovim. That made that corrected all of the rest of his life that he had the 130 years previous. We can say that by means of these last 17 years, <clears throat> he did reach the year of his forefathers. That uh, there's, how, when, how old was Yaakov when he passed away? 147 years. It reached to the ultimate completeness and wholesomeness as the 180 years of his father. Okay, how is this? How are we going to explain this? What does it mean? The reason that his 130 years of Yaakov <clears throat> were not complete, like Abraham was in, in an inside way of looking at it, that since the whole idea of Yaakov was the future redemption, 
The whole idea of Yaakov was that godliness should be revealed everywhere in the world. And when Yosef was born, so Yaakov thought, oh, now I can go back to the house of Lavan and the Sheva Shalva, I can sit in peace. Peace has come to the world. All the time that this true redemption, Mashiach, and the true redemption, and godliness being revealed everywhere in the world and in every single soul, <clears throat> then I'm not, my life is, is empty. That's what it means. Comforts Allah robes I'll show Yosef. Here I've got Yosef. All of a sudden, what happens? The brothers hate Yosef. They throw him in. All the time that the true redemption has not occurred, <clears throat> that I'm not together with Yosef and there's revealed godliness in the world, then my life is very few. They're missing. My days are empty. <clears throat> because the main thing is missing, namely redemption. This Yaakov made known to Paro. <clears throat> Don't make a mistake and think that Yaakov <clears throat> was sufficed in this, the fact that we're coming down to the land of Egypt. Right? Why did he tell this to Paro? What, what is business is Paro, right? You're sitting next to somebody in the, in the bus and somebody says, oh, how, how old are you? I have a terrible life. My life is miserable. Let me tell you about my wife. Let me tell Who cares? I just asked you a simple question. Why did Yaakov tell this whole business to Paro? My life is miserable and it's awful and it's very few years. I, my life is not really a life. Why did he tell this to Paro? He said, because Paro <clears throat> brought him down into Egypt. The river Nile rose up and he said to Yaakov, you can take the best place of the land you want to. Your son saved the whole world. At the Achel of Oretz, you could take the best things in the land of Egypt. <clears throat> so Yaakov said, listen, the fact that you can give me anything you want to in this world, and my life is miserable. It's empty. Because all I'm thinking about is the future redemption. All I want is the godliness should be revealed everywhere. But Mela, so even now that we're in Egypt, and the, <clears throat> the best times could possibly be, <clears throat> this is only a preparation for the future redemption. Because by means of refining Egypt, by means of this, it says, by means of refining Egypt, then will be the future redemption. The future redemption where godliness will be revealed, the true potential for good will be revealed in every single human being and every single <clears throat> corner of the world in every single detail of the world, and in a higher and a higher way, <laughs> then Yaakov will live not just 147 years, and not just 180 years like Yitzchak did, but it'll be eternal life. So Yaakov is saying, even if I would have lived 1,000 years, it still would be very few, because there would be years without any meaning to them. Miaros, what can we learn from this in regarding to what we have to do? <clears throat> Since Kevin Shenosov Lakaksha Doreno, that our generation is the last generation of exile, it's the sof of a gullus, like we said, Kate Yamim, the door Rishon Shal Gaula, and it's the first generation for the redemption, Kate Yamin. The Kate means also the beginning. Tehilis Agula, the beginning of the redemption. So you could take it whichever way you want to. You could say, okay, this is the end of the exile, but we're still in exile. Or you can say, no, we're not in exile anymore. This is the beginning of the redemption. And the reason it seems that we're in the, in the, the still exile, the terrible exile, we, it's just the, the redemption is just beginning. <clears throat> so therefore, in any case, we're in, the, we're in special days. These are the days that are relevant to the future redemption. Whether because of the portion of this week, which is called Miketz, Miketz means from the end, o hayamim, the end of the days means the end of the exile, the darkness, and the Ketz hayamim, or the beginning of the redemption, the beginning of light. <clears throat> because that's the portion of the week, Miketz, and also because of Hanukkah. Hanukkah that are set in these days. Hanukkah is making light. And also the miracle was on oil, like we said before, 
This is the Shemr Kachi. This is like the oil of anointing that Mashiach is going to be anointed with. And especially on Shabbat Chanukah, this coming Shabbat. <clears throat> that Shabbat is, is always attached, is connected to, and reminds us of the future redemption. <clears throat> Shabbat is the day that God does everything, right? We don't, <clears throat> we're even forbid, forbidden to do anything that resembles work. <clears throat> Shabbat is the day when we realize the truth that God is really doing everything. And a Kaviyot Shanazen this year, which is after the fifth light of Hanukkah, this will be the, the, the fifth light of Hanukkah. And now in our year, this is going to be tonight, Friday. Uh, Thursday night is going to be the fifth night. But, and, and when the Rebbe spoke it, it was one more day. And the fifth light of Hanukkah is when the second, the first Rebbe of Chabad got out of prison the second time. It was put into prison like one year later after on, on, on much more severe charges, but his conditions were much better because he had already been declared. Okay. And in Rosh Chodesh, <coughs> because they already understood that the, that the first Rebbe of Chabad was a very unusual special person, but nevertheless, they had to take the charges seriously. So they put him into prison, but in much better conditions. But the charges were more severe because the charges were really not just against the Rebbe himself, but against Hasidut. In any case, also Rosh Chodesh, this Shabbos is going to be Rosh Chodesh, it's going to be the first day of the month. This shows on the Chidush, the, the renewal of the Jewish people, that the Jewish people are going to be renewed like the moon. Remember, we talked about that last week. They are going to be renewed in the future redemption, a complete redemption. Therefore, we should, like the lights of Hanukkah, as the lights of Hanukkah, Add on from day to day. That's the main teaching of Hanukkah. That if we did light and we transform dark to light, which is an amazing thing, don't be satisfied with it. You always have to be increasing. Mosef Aholach. <clears throat> things that will bring to the future total redemption. And among them, what are the things we have to do in order to bring this future redemption? Number one, Chizok Emuna, Strengthening your faith and your desire and your, how do you say, your, uh, your um, uh, imp impatience for the coming of the Mashiach. Ad kerekach to the degree, she nirga so that you can feel, she calls a man she Mashiach tzitkenu adayin lo ba, that as long as Mashiach did not come in a revealed way, yom of chasarim, that the days are empty. Kediv <coughs> Yaakov, like Yaakov said, that even 130 years are just a little bit. <clears throat> because the, the, the redemption, the, the total redemption, the total revelation of the creator of the universe in the world is not here. So the days are empty. And even more, we have to increase learning and advertising the inside of the Torah, <clears throat> the, the Hasidut, the ideas of how the oneness of God is revealed in everything. And how we can love God and have fear God and have an intimate, a personal, direct relationship with the creator of the universe who's creating us. He's creating each and every one of us. That's a good enough reason to love him. <clears throat> but Torah, Bechalal, and Torah in general. That's the Indian of Yaakov. That's Torah in, in general. is the thing of Jacob. Just to appreciate God and love God, right? But without the Torah, you can totally mix everything up. You can, you can head off in the wrong direction. <clears throat> that's the Shem and that's the oil, the secrets of the secrets of the Torah. Not only to know what to do, but also know who you're doing it for. You're doing it for the creator of the universe. <clears throat> and this is a way, like the lights of Hanukkah, that it can shine outside. We have to spread the teachings of Hasidut outward until until there are no more, no more opposition to the creator and to his teachings. And especially, we should go out and spread out in now, in Hanukkah, including making for bring-ins of joy, like the Rambam says, the day of Hanukkah are the days of happiness and praise of God. In addition, in doing the customs of giving Hanukkah money also, that we'll have to do tonight. In case, Ubechol is as a special teaching for this year, that Shabbat Hanukkah falls on Rosh Chodesh, it does, and Rosh Chodesh is two, two days, which it is, that's this year, 
then Shabbat Hanukkah, Shabbat Hanukkah is on the first day of Rosh Chodesh, right? This this year, that's what it's going to be. And the Hakdama, that the lights of Hanukkah, that it's a mitzvah to put them on the, no, no, I'm sorry, not this year. This year, it's going to be the second day of Rosh Chodesh. T- tomorrow is uh, Friday. Friday is going to be the first day. <clears throat> to put the, the advertise outside in the public places. The, in, 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 here in Israel, I don't know what it is in America, but here in Israel, <clears throat> they, they drive around with cars. They have things on their cars. Uh, the, the Hanukkah menorahs with lights on their cars and they advertise to go to stores, go to places and everything. Last night I was in the army. I went to the army. Beautiful. Uh, the One of these missile sites that was like 50 soldiers over there, fantastic. Until the Kali the Rav the Talmud die, till there's no more opposition. That's Shabbat Hanukkah in a public place. <clears throat> the, the, and in those days, the Rebbe also had a, they made a um, a worldwide uh, by by the satellite. I think it was the first one ever in the history of the world. The satellite that they lit Hanukkah candles in simultaneously in different places in the world, right, where it was nighttime, whatever. Nasa Maimur Matsav Shokalos Anefesh, there's Kalia that it's stressed <clears throat> that this is a uh, Yahulu, that the bad becomes transformed and, uh, how do you say, inspired also to serve God. That's the completion of everything. When Shabbat Hanukkah falls on Rosh Chodesh, which is that year, this is what happens this year. And this year it's going to be the longest Birkat Muslim, is it? Because it's Shabbat. So you have to add something on Shabbat, the Shabbat. And it's Hanukkah, so you have to add the Allah Nisim Fracha. And you also have to add Yalav Yal because it's Rosh Chodesh. It's stressed even more that you have to increase. You have to increase incomparably <clears throat> to uh, the, uh, in, a, in a brand new way <clears throat> than what it was before, like being born brand new, like Rosh Chodesh. That's even a bigger novelty. When Rosh Chodesh is two days, then the first day of Rosh Chodesh is on Shabbat. This year it's, it's on Friday. So automatically also, the second day of Rosh Chodesh is, is going to be on Shabbat, like this year. The Haftorah is going to be, <clears throat> where is this? This year the Haftorah is Roni Vesimchi. We'll learn about this today. Okay, so it's a double and a double renewal. Yehi Ratzon, may it be God's will. May it be God's will. That even before we add on to these things of <clears throat> Hanukkah, th- this Shabbat, by the way, we read the Haftorah afterwards. We read the Haftorah called Roni Vesimcha of, of, of Rosh Chodesh, but also we read the Haftorah for the next day. The next day is Machar Chodesh, and we read that also. <clears throat> but my in any case, says the Rebbe, all these hints and all these. The, 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 the metaphors and all this giving of power that we have from God and all these blessings that we have for the first, nevertheless, all the time that the redemption, complete redemption, has not come actually physically in the world and it should be any instant, it should make us a little bit crazy. And that's what it means. Our days are empty, but we can't be satisfied. May it be God's will. That even before we add anything on in the things of Hanukkah and actual, right? We light the candles, we give charity, we spread Hasidut. God should give, he, God should give the money, Hanukkah guilt. It's called Hanukkah guilt, the money of Hanukkah. God should give us charity, not just in a way that a little gift, but in a way of Tashlum Chov, also that He's giving us, repaying the debt. Nayis Robo God loves us. We are all the sons of God. Every Jew is the son of God. We work so hard. I think we deserve a nice Hanukkah guilt. We've been faithful through all this, the, the, the trials and the tribulations and the difficulties from inside, from outside. It, it, give us also Hanukkah guilt. Give us the the most necessary thing. What's the best Hanukkah guilt God can give us? Give us the redemption, the true, complete redemption by means of David Malch Mashiach, by means of the Mashiach. It says the Mashiach that with, he was anointed with holy oil. 
an actual, and by means of this, we'll have the real Hanukkah, the whole, the third temple will come from heaven. Ah, pretty fantastic. But the Jews leaving Egypt was more fantastic. And that the, it says the third temple will be built and complete. It'll be come down into the world. Actually, this is in, it's not just a, a Kabbalistic thing. This is also in the, in the Talmud, it says. That that's the third temple is going to be built by God. It's already ready. I don't know how that's going to be. And it's going to come down into the world. The main thing is that it should happen right now. <clears throat> when we're reading the, in, in Mincha of Shabbat in the Parsha of Yigash, remember the Rebbe spoke this on Shabbat, right? That the whole thing is <clears throat> bringing the redemption of Tefillah by Yigash Yosef. It says that, that Yehuda came close to Yosef. According to Kabbalah, Hasidus explains it very beautifully that Yehuda is the thing of prayer and Yosef is the thing of redemption. As often in such a way that Geula, this redemption, will come even before we pray. How much more so after all the prayers that we prayed on this Shabbat, because the Rebbe is speaking now, this is after the prayers of in Shabbat, in the afternoon. So all that's remaining on Shabbat, the Rebbe is speaking, is just the Mincha prayer. So he says, so now the Mincha prayer is going to be Vayigash, <clears throat> that's the coming close of Yehuda to Yosef, coming close to prayer, to redemption. Says the Rebbe, the Rebbe, God can make the redemption come first, immediately, not to delay it even one instant. Since that this redemption is going to come immediately on the first day of Tevet, that's going to be to us is going to be on Shabbat, right? And so it'll be the tenth day of Tevet, which is a fast day usually, will be a Yom Tov, like the Rambam says in the end of the laws of fasting, that all of the fasts of the future are going to be. Uh, negated, they're going to be transformed in the days of the Mashiach, and they won't. Um, <clears throat> and not only that, will they be will they be negated, but they'll be transformed into holidays and do, jo, days of jo, rejoicing, because all these fast days are because of the destruction of the temple. So it says that when the temple is rebuilt, so then they'll all be. <clears throat> don't think you can do it now. You can't do it now. It says when the temple is rebuilt, and then there'll be joy all over. Then there won't be any more fasting. It'll be joy. Like it says, call Marshem, Savos, like it says in the prophet uh, Zechariah. Like it says in the prophet Zechariah, which, by the way, um, were the, the Haftorah from this week uh, is from Zechariah. Roni Vasimchi, Batsion is from Zechariah. Okay. So it says that <clears throat> these fasts, what is it? It says, God says, the, 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 the day, the fast of the 10th will transform to a days of joy and rejoicing and holidays. So everything will be, every day will be festivity. It all depends on us to do it, but we have all the signs, we have all the power, we have everything we need. Let Mashiach do the rest. We need Mashiach right now. Let's try this Ayom Yom Chabad. Now, tomorrow, tonight, today, we're having a class at 3 o'clock. And tomorrow, we're also going to learn Hasidut in the morning. Tomorrow, we're going to finish the Sikh uh, that we started last Friday, if you remember. It was customary for the Semach Tzedek to have a forbringen on one of the evenings of Hanukkah with his family. This was called latkes evening. Latkes are like uh, whatever it is, uh, 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 potato pancakes. This is also the practice of the first Rebbe of Chabad and the second Rebbe of Chabad. The Tzemach Tzedek is the third Rebbe. They used to tell stories, and some stories which were talked about every Hanukkah, they, they, they were told the Hanukkah before, <coughs> right? They, some which were widely talked about every Hanukkah, even though they had discussed the world, be, world before. And it was, the, the Rebbe would tell stories, and everyone would retell these stories, one of the, even though the Rebbe had told these stories last year. The rabbi would give Hanukkah money on the evening of the fourth or the fifth night of Hanukkah. God willing, that's what we'll all do. And God should give us the biggest Hanukkah guilt, Mashiach. Now, have a good day and a happy holiday, a happy Hanukkah with Mashiach now. God willing, see you all at three o'clock.